generally what inspires you, inspires your activity as a composer. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and I don't mean the more practical things, right. uh, you know, uh, such as just an op opportunity mm -hmm, to write. Mm -hmm. um, and then maybe more specifically, what have you found most inspiring in creating this piece? In general, why I find it was interesting because I was just on a panel discussion of young composers where we were sort of asked this question, you know, why do you write? And a, it, it's something that we sort of, we all as composers have to figure out, right? Like, or why do we keep going? And I think it's over sort of the last two years or so that I've really started to come up with an answer, at least for now. And, and um, as uh, commonplace as it might sound, my impetus for composing is commu human communication. Um, I, I'm, anyone who knows me knows I'm a talker. Um, I love to speak with people. I love to get to know people. Um, I love to, uh, and, and there's, so there's, there's many sort of different forms of communication. And, uh, and so, yeah, it, it just the opportunity to, to, um, to share a common experience of music is really, that, that's really what drives me all the time. It's funny because I, I, when I was asked this question for this panel, the, 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 the story that I told was I had a performance um, the, with a good orchestra in, um, you know, mid-sized city and um, I had sort of the feeling that the performance had gone pretty well and, thing, you know, things were clear and this and did that. And, and the, the reaction I got both from the audience and then from a number of critics was just one of sort of bafflement. Sort of, and I, th I found myself sort of being treated as kind of like some sort of rogue or, um, or maverick young composer who, who, was, who was, you know, t trying these, you know, crazy things, you know. Those are, that was the kindest they would be. Yeah. Um, a mishmash, I think, was, or, or dour, you know, a dour mishmash was another way. And I didn't take it too personally, but what I realized sort of from that experience was there were things that I had meant to be clear that... That, that, that I had meant to be obvious, that I thought would sort of be obvious to anybody who was listening. And they weren't. I mean, they, they just, it just didn't take, it didn't come across to those who were listening. And through the, through the process of sort of working through this, I realized, well, I'm, I guess I'm getting at some sort of motivation here. Why am I bothered by the fact that what I'm trying to say um, is not coming across? Yeah. And it's not a matter of content. This is sort of what I discovered, was that it wasn't so much that, that it was like if I'm giving a speech, a public speech, and, and you know, I got all sorts of, you know, d d confusion afterwards. It wasn't necessarily that the content was confusing, but that maybe I was standing too far away from the microphone, right. or I was talking too quickly, yeah. or, or I, um, I tried to say too much in too little time. But sort of, as I was answering these questions for myself, it occurred to me, it's like, well, I guess then really what I'm most concerned about at the end of the day when a piece is done, I mean, I, of course, you know, I'm a music lover, so I want, I want it to be satisfying music right. for, for me, Jake, music lover, but also that it would be satisfying for other music lovers in the room. Um, and of course, that, that it's an impossible task because you never know who's in the audience, you never know who's, who's going to be there. Mm -hmm. So you can't, you, know, you can't sort of write. It isn't necessarily a matter of writing what people want to hear, but uh, sort of instead, I've said before, writing music that demands to be heard. Um, that actually has content, and uh, and this doesn't even necessarily mean incorporating extra musical ideas because I you know music of course can be pure you know it can be pure communication, in almost a more real sense than um, than speaking with words. In this whole project, is was there a particular text or a particular um, consideration uh, that's just brought to your mind by the text that you find? you are really emotionally drawn to or resonate mm -hmm. with. I mean, a lot of it I understand is, um, you know, it's left brain, right brain, and, you, and a lot of it is just a consciousness of what you're doing technically. Yeah. And how, you know, the historical context and all this stuff. And the, and the fun of, you know, choosing which saints are included. But I mean, right. for you personally, what was the most meaningful emotional uh, moment or gesture? It's, it, it has, the, the piece has an emotional arc to it. Um, and sort of each movement, I could say, has something to do, some sort of response to, emotional response by me, to the concept of the saints, um, as, as understood in Roman Catholic theology, but also extrapolated to, to basically, I mean, to basically any, a, any way of thinking that engages a, a true afterlife. 
So the, the afterlife is, is the afterlife was a was a uh, an important consideration, um, but also um, the the concept of of a saint. You know, it, it it is a it's often sort of almost used disparagingly. You know, it's, you know, sort of some sort of holier than thou. Um, but what I found in in I especially find sort of in engaging the the saints themselves is what what imperfect and and broken people they were. I mean, today, to actually, today happens to be the Feast of St. Monica, um, and tomorrow is the Feast of St. Augustine. Um, and uh, Augustine, of, of course, is sort of one of the great theologians in the first 500 years of Christianity. Um, an incredible mind. I mean, really one of the great, great minds. Um, but he was, he was a pretty, like, rowdy young man. I mean, he really had, he really had kind of, uh, you know, and... In, in, until he came later to theological study and, and, and really engaged Christianity, um, you know, he had a good time. <laughs> and all that time, St. Monica, his mother, was sort of like, just sort of quietly praying for him. And so today we celebrate the Feast of St. Monica, and tomorrow is the Feast of St. Augustine. And we might not have had the Feast of St. Augustine were it not for the intercessions of St. Monica, you know, from a, from a, from a purely sort of Christian understanding. And that to me is sort of like this incredibly powerful illustration of, of what we're talking about. We're talking about human history and any hero that we have, any, any of our own sort of personal saints, uh, it isn't a matter of, of human perfection, but it's sort of a matter of, um, of our imperfections kind of being used for some sort of higher purpose. Um, and that to me is an in, incredibly engaging idea. Because I, I know my own imperfections well. Um, but, you know, it, I just find in the lives of the saints and in the concept of the saints, just it, it, it's sort of a, a it, I find that very inspiring. Just sort of this concept of that it's, it's not, it's not it, being a saint isn't an issue of having a perfect history. Right. Um, because certainly uh, Augustine didn't. But uh, there really are, you know, I mean, extraordinary human beings mm -hmm. so, to, so to kind of engage this group of people um, engage the ideas the ideas of sort of of, of their lives that's why my intro is a very is is kind of rowdy I mean it's not exactly it, it, it it's not a solemn procession it's a very it's it's a procession of um, of kind of ragtag almost mm -hmm. because we're not talking about sort of like this this uh, Plutonian ideal of a human being. This is why I've always been taken with um, icons and paintings, depictions of the saints, because as a whole, they're quite remarkable. Um, but as an, and, and you know, of course, very pure and holy and all that. But individually, they're they're just they're just people. And um, I don't know. I find that I just I I, I find that incredibly inspiring and, and interesting and. Uh, so those are sort of some of the ideas that I that I engage, and sort of each movement kind of has its 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 um its sort of trope with that, either with the afterlife or with the concept of of human imperfection.